do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in the last lecture we have studied what is the enthalpy of formation uh, as well as what is the enthalpy of uh, combustion and the numericals were also written in on that topic so now we are going to learn about what is uh, bond enthalpy so let us understand what is actually bond enthalpy and what are the applications of it so now let us understand what is actually bond enthalpy so the enthalpy change necessary to break a particular covalent bond in one mole of a gaseous molecule to produce gaseous atoms or gaseous radicals is called as bond enthalpy so it is very simple to understand that is bond enthalpy is related to the enthalpy that we need so as to break a particular covalent bond of a molecule so a particular covalent bond of a molecule can be as we could say because the a uh, covalent bond can be made up of uh, various uh, kinds of uh, uh, bonds between uh, two different elements they can be same also but they can be they can also be different so how much amount of energy is been needed to break a specific uh, bond uh, of a covalent uh, molecule uh, that is known as the bond enthalpy so for a better understanding uh, let me give you an example so that it will be very much easy to understand which is this one suppose uh, if we have h2 uh, as a gas molecule uh, of hydrogen gas and we have to break the bond uh, between hydrogen and hydrogen because hydrogen and hydrogen has one covalent bond between each other so what will happen suppose the energy that is required to break this bond will make the term known as bond enthalpy so since we are breaking the bond and uh, while breaking the bond of the h2 molecule which is basically a diatomic so what kind of atoms that we could get we will get two kind of atoms in this case that is one is hydrogen and another one is also hydrogen so in this process basically the energy is been needed to break the bond so the energy that is been needed to break the bond is basically 436.4 kJ so this is a positive uh, change that we have got to know so what does this means this means that this much amount of energy is been needed Uh, so as to uh, convert the hydrogen uh, molecule into the hydrogen atoms and hence this is said to be the bond enthalpy of the hydrogen uh, or we could say that the bond enthalpy of h uh, dash h let me uh, uh, tell you that how it is been represented because since we are breaking the h2 molecules and in this molecules basically h and h bond are present so therefore the bond enthalpy can be written as delta h not and suppose if it is uh, under a standard condition so delta h not and which will have a subscript of h bond h which means that the bond enthalpy of h and h is been mentioned and that much amount of energy is been needed so in this case is basically 436.4 kJ of energy is needed to break the bond between hydrogen and hydrogen so therefore the bond enthalpy of a diatomic molecule is same as that of the enthalpy of atomization that we have did in our earlier lectures also that is enthalpy is uh, in physical state of physical state so in that also what we have got to know that the enthalpy that uh, is been required or the change in enthalpy that we observe uh, when a, a particular molecule is been converted into atoms and that kind of process where a molecule is been converted into atoms individual atoms is basically known as atomization so in this case also the uh, bond enthalpy for a diatomic molecule is nothing but the enthalpy of atomization it is very similar to that but what happens if we have a covalent uh, molecule which has multiple and different kind of covalent bonds attached to it let me give an example so before understanding let us understand that what will happen if we have a poly uh, atomic molecule so the concept of poly uh, in a poly atomic molecule basically the concept of bond enthalpy is complicated in case of uh, poly atomic molecules why because every covalent bond in a poly atomic molecule has its own specific bond enthalpy so that is what i want to explain uh, so for that reason uh, i have an example for you that is this one 
So now it would be very much because this is a polyatomic molecule that we could say it is not a diatomic molecule. It requires actually three uh, atoms so as to form H2O. That's the reason it is a triatomic or we could say as a polyatomic uh, molecule. Suppose this H2 which is be present in a uh, basically a gaseous state and even uh, the product that we will get again it will be in gaseous state. So suppose if H2 molecules are being uh, broken or and we know that uh, the H2 molecules uh, have a bond like uh, Suppose if we are talking about uh, H2 molecule, then this is the bond that we observe. So if we have to break this bond, so there are basically two kind of bond that we are observing. In this case, is one is uh, OH, that is this one. So this is the bond that we have to break, as well as so once we break the bond, so which one, uh, which molecules uh, will get dissociate in this H2? Basically, the hydrogen and the OH will dissociate. But the further energy is also been required so as to break this OH bond. So which will make a totally of amount of energy that will be nothing but the enthalpy change that we will observe in this process that you could see here. That is in H2 molecules if I break this molecules into three parts that is two times of hydrogen and uh, one uh, atom of oxygen. So therefore the total enthalpy change that I observe in this reaction is basically 927 kilojoule. So 927 kilojoule of energy has been uh, that is we observe when uh, this H2 molecule is been uh, breaking. So this positive charge implies that the uh, energy has been provided to the H2 and then only it has been divided into two types of hydrogen atoms while uh, one type of oxygen atom. So but this is the enthalpy of the reaction that we have observed. So what we uh, what would be the uh, bond enthalpy uh, during this process? So therefore it has been divided into two steps because we are have to break the bonds that is one covalent bond at each time. So therefore it has been divided into two steps. The first step is if this H2 molecule is been divided into OH and H which implies that we have broke this bond. We have dissociated uh, this H and we have made a dissociation of this OH that was earlier and during breaking of this bond the energy that uh, was being spent it was basically 499 kilojoule so this much amount of energy is being broken when uh, H is being dissociated with OH that we could observe here so during this process basically 499 kilojoule of energy has been dissociated or, or has been released during dissociation so uh, in this case uh, what we could see that one bond has been broken one bond that is one coherent bond has been broken and during that process that is 499 kilojoule of energy has been uh, required to break the bond but still one bond is also remaining that is uh, we have now OH uh, and now this OH uh, that is a group of atom that we have of oxygen and uh, hydrogen and we have to break it again so as to uh, understand what would be the bond enthalpy between oxygen and uh, hydrogen in this case. So when uh, after breaking this and all the uh, fission states are in gaseous state uh, let me mention that also and during this process what happens is uh, the delta H0 that has been observed is 420 kilojoule. That means, suppose if we have uh, broken this bond, and in this process, basically 428 kilojoule has been uh, required so as to break this bond. But the one difference has been sure to understand that uh, if I have uh, the first bond that I have broke, that is uh, when I have dissociated uh, the OH uh, with that of the H, then the amount that it was been released was or the amount that it was required to break the bond was 499 kilojoule. But the same bond or same kind of bond that is uh, the bond between OH uh, that I have broken here. So at that time basically 428 kilojoule of energy was being required. So this makes a clear uh, indication for us to know that the bond enthalpy for different when they are attached to different groups they are also behaving different. So that's the reason uh, for suppose now what we have to analyze whether the reaction uh, that enthalpy of the reaction is similar to that of the origin or not because these two are different in different uh, when they are attached to different uh, bonds or when they are diff attached to different atoms so now first let, let us first of all uh, calculate this thing and uh, let us analyze that what is the enthalpy change that we would observe in this case so as we could see that uh, the OH that has been present on the uh, 
right hand side in this case and again which has been present in this case is basically the same so therefore I will cancel out this thing so the overall uh, net cell reaction that we have got is basically H2O which is present in the gaseous state and this will be similar to that of two times of H that we have so therefore two times of H and they are in gaseous state while one times of oxygen that we have got again it is a gaseous state so let us first of all check whether uh, this summation that we will do right now will be equal to that or not it will be equal to that what we have got so therefore it would be basically 927 kilojoule of energy that has been required uh, to H2 uh, so as to break uh, into two uh, atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen so this clearly uh, has given us an information that uh, from this bond enthalpy we could calculate what would be the heat of reaction so by calculating the bond enthalpy we could also calculate what would be the heat of the particular reaction that we we can easily analyze that also but talking about this term that what we have uh, got to know that is again when we are talking when uh, this H was been dissociated with that of oxygen but now this oxygen was been attached to this hydrogen so in this case basically 499 kilojoule of energy was being required by that of the same uh, hydrogen if I am dissociated with this oxygen and in this case basically uh, 428 kilojoule of energy is being uh, required so because of this uh, what we are going to do is we are going to take an average of this so in this case basically the energy that was been required to break the bonds it was basically uh, for h2o it was 927 kilojoule of energy that was been required so as to break the bonds between h2o that is h o and again oh so because as we could see there are two kinds of covalent bond and the two covalent bonds are nothing but attached to the oxygen and hydrogen again oxygen and hydrogen so for that we could take the average of that so therefore the delta h naught for h and o and we have taken an average of that suppose so in this case it would be 927 divided by 2 so let us see what is the answer that we could get so basically 463.5 kilojoule of energy is been required to break the bond between oxygen and hydrogen so this is uh, the average that we have got to know that is 433.5 kilojoule of energy has been needed to break the bond between uh, the oxygen and hydrogen and it is not 428 because as i mentioned earlier uh, this bond can be attached to different uh, other kind of group of atoms or group of molecules so therefore this is the average thing that we have got to know so uh, let us talk about the another molecule for example if I talk about a methane suppose this is the methane molecule and in this uh, methane molecule what kind of bond that I would see and uh, how much kind of bond that energy that I would need to bring the bond so in this process basically as we could see that the carbon and hydrogen uh, molecule or the carbon and hydrogen atom in this case the energy would be needed to break this bond again this four types or four covalent bond will be uh, broken in this process so as to make as a carbon and four times of that of hydrogen so in this case also the bond uh, the enthalpy of the uh, reaction can be calculated but it is much more obvious to understand that uh, the uh, bond enthalpy for the carbon and hydrogen in this case would be same but again the value would be an average value because the first time that when we break uh, the carbon and hydrogen bond in this case so now this carbon and hydrogen bond have a covalent bond but this whole thing is been attached to CH3 this carbon is attached to now it becomes CH3 and we are now breaking the hydrogen bond uh, with CH3 so therefore that would have a particular uh, bond enthalpy and again suppose if we have to break this bond again so the thing is we will take the average of it and that overall bond enthalpy that we get is nothing but the average uh, of the thing of the overall molecule from which we have broken the bonds so this was an example so now let us back come back to the again the main concept of that, that how can we calculate the bond enthalpy uh, and what is the relationship between the enthalpy of a reaction and bond enthalpy 
So this is the relation between the bond enthalpy and the enthalpy of the reaction or the change in enthalpy of the reaction. It is very much sim simple to understand this. That is uh, delta H naught of reaction means the change in enthalpy of the reaction when it is in a standard state is equals to the summation of the change in enthalpy of the reactant bonds or basically the bond enthalpies of the reactants minus the summation of the bond enthalpies of the product. So it is very similar to that of what we have did and how can we calculate the heat of reaction but in the heat of reaction it was basically the submission of the uh, uh, enthalpy change of product minus the submission of the enthalpy change uh, of the reactant but in this case it is uh, quite reverse of that in this case basically we have reactant bonds first uh, that has been written first and we have to subtract that with the uh, from uh, that is product bonds that is uh, the bond enthalpy of the products so this is what we have got and this makes a relation to understand what would be the heat of a reaction or enthalpy of a reaction at a standard state so to understand uh, so this is the formula that we should make uh, in concern because this would be very much essential to solve a numerical uh, ahead and uh, talking about the next thing so as to make it understand in a better way so this is a basic diagram where uh, it, it would be very much easy to understand uh, as you could see that uh, this is the reactant uh, and uh, because the energy is been needed to break the bonds so as to convert into atoms therefore the energy as we could see the energy required to break the bonds and since this line is moving up that means we have to provide the energy to the reactant so as to get converted into atoms while well, as you could see that the reactants are being converted into products in this the delta H been is now decreasing so that means the energy has been released uh, in that process so as to uh, convert the reactant into product and that kind of difference that we are observing uh, between the product and reactant is nothing known as the enthalpy of the reaction and uh, now talking about the last one that is uh, when we have to convert uh, atoms to products so, so that means uh, various atoms of different uh, kind or of the similar kind they will combine with each other so as to form a bond or so as to uh, form a bond uh, and ultimately they will form a compound or they will form a molecule so this process uh, as we know as we have discussed earlier also when two atoms or uh, two substances when collide with each other or they come uh, and integrate with each other so what will happen the energy has been released the similarly that we have did in uh, electron gain enthalpy also the electron has been now collaborating with an atom or with an um, uh, cation or a kind of ion and from which energy has been released so similarly to, to that of when atoms are been combined with each other so energy has been released so this is the energy uh, released in bond formation so this is an overall graph uh, uh, or uh, that could relate us that what is the relationship between the bond enthalpy as well as the heat of reaction. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very much clearly and will try more and more kind of uh, this subject so as to understand thermochemistry. So share this video with friends and don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.